My name is Ashley Hammond. I am a Life Sciences Fellow in the University of Missouri's Department of Pathology and Anatomical Sciences. My research involves using integrative anatomical techniques to compare fossilized bone fragments from ancient apes to those of modern primate species. The goal is to learn more about how early great apes or hominids, the gorilla, chimpanzee, orangutan, and human family, interacted with their native habitat. My colleagues and I are particularly interested in questions related to locomotion, since virtually all discussions of human origins focus on the adaptations in great apes that led to bipedalism, or upright walking, in the human line. My most recent work involved an examination of some fossilized bone fragments from Purolopithecus catalunicus, in particular, two previously unstudied pelvis fragments. Purolopithecus was an ape that lived close to 12 million years ago. After its discovery in Spain back in late 2003, a group of scientists from the Institute of Catalan Paleontology defended the theory that this was the fossilized remains of one of the earliest known great apes. If this is correct, this would make Purolopithecus one of the most important fossilized species of primate yet discovered. Our investigation was greatly enhanced by the use of a relatively new analytical tool, a tabletop laser scanner, that, when attached to a turntable, allowed us to create 3D models of the surfaces of the fossils. We can see here on the screen that we have a monkey, a proboscis monkey, on the left, and a chimpanzee pelvis on the right. And some of the big differences that we see in these two pelvis relate to muscular structure related to different locomotor behavior. We can see that the iliac orientation is very different. It's very laterally or directed towards the side in apes, whereas in monkeys it's, the ilium is facing more towards the front. The ilium itself is al also very different in width. It's very wide in apes and narrow in monkeys. And we can also see that the, the gluteal plane is very different. So this is the part of the ilium where the gluteal muscles attach. It's very shallow and broad in apes and very deeply concave, deeply curved in monkeys. When we take this to the Purolopithecus fossil and compare it to a monkey and an ape, we can see that there are certain similarities uh, between the fossil and the living species. In particular, it seems to be very deeply concave on the ilium, just like a monkey, and we can also see that it was not nearly as wide of a pelvis as a great ape has. And so this leads us to believe that this might have been a more primitive pelvis. The pelvis is an important site of attachment for arm musculature and can provide important information about locomotor behaviors. When it was first discovered, the Purolopithecus skeleton was noted to have hands that were not built for below branch suspension or arm swinging behaviors. The fingers just weren't as long or curved as you would expect in a great ape. This was a surprise for most scientists, since we had previously assumed that all great apes inherited arm swinging behaviors from a common ancestor. At the end of our analysis on the Purolopithecus pelvis, we were able to say with a high degree of confidence that Purolopithecus truly was a significant find and that it did not have a pelvis like living species of great apes. The pelvis of Purolopithecus was more similar to an early primitive fossil ape called Proconsul Nyanzi, which lived around 18 million years ago in Kenya. Purolopithecus wasn't as evolved for suspensory arm swinging behaviors as the modern great apes and was intermediate or even primitive in most aspects of its pelvic anatomy. Perhaps the most significant takeaway is this. Purolopithecus's skeleton represents yet another piece of evidence suggesting that the living species of great apes are probably not the best models for determining what our human ancestors would have looked like. Going forward, I hope to use 3D technologies to examine other questions related to our complex evolutionary history. My time here at the University of Missouri, particularly my work with my dissertation advisor, Professor Carol Ward, has played a key role in preparing me for these types of projects and for becoming better equipped to explore this fascinating intersection of paleontology, live animal research, and anatomical research.